How do I? How do I? How do I? Ah! I wanted to take the sides off. Is it alt? Yeah, there it is. There we go. There we go. But yeah. So different idea. Um I really wanted it to just be different and 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 as I said before if we're releasing just like any other old game, then we're also going to be treated like any other old game. And the expectations might be different. Where, you know, remember, like I said before, if we were opening a Minecraft server for the stream only, and people wouldn't expect the same things for a community game. You know what I mean? It's just fun and games and something we do together. And, and if some days we want to do this specific thing, or if I want to test this mission out, or... So I can more or less just use it as a thing we do together so to keep us all engaged, to keep us all having something we yeah, will do together. Um, to build everything we do here with the pure goal of helping um, the rescue zoo. Also, this is... I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating! <laughs> I'm not cheating! Ah. But yeah, basically right now what we're working on is uh, the last area, the social area, the top of the space station. Yeah, I like it too. And this is not... This is not done. <laughs> All developers are cheaters. <laughs> but yeah, so much to do. You can see his animations needs to be changed and stuff. I really like what we're going for here with... Can you see that everything else is like hyper-realistic? But the teddy is having this cartoony style, which I think gives a really nice... Tra what do you say? Like pops out more? And it's gonna be like that throughout the game. We're also working on... You remember like in Ark and games like that, you get yeah, contrast. You can make your character like his head bigger and smaller and longer. And we were originally gonna do it so we were just making the five different characters. But we just realized that first of all, it takes a lot of time to make all the characters. It takes a month full time for one artist to make one character. So instead, we're looking at there's a specific system where we need to do a lot of rework on the character. Basically, the rig, which is basically the skeleton inside of this, can be used with a system that basically does so it can stretch in and out and it doesn't break the textures and all that stuff. And by that, people can customize their own teddies. Um, we're still going to make the teddy crew, team, whatever, they're gonna be the main story characters together with Anton. But, um... We just thought it would be more fun if players could customize the teddies. Bigger, longer, shorter, fatter, skinnier. But still keep the original five characters in the game as... It could be quest givers or whatever. Uh, let me... Um, oh, but I can actually tell you guys something awesome. How this area is gonna work. Let me. Uh... Yeah, let me just get over here so I can show you lovely people. I think you're gonna like this because we did a little bit of changing after a lot of research and 
you know you're building the rescue zoo area and stuff. Um, or res yeah, rescue zoo. One sec, guys. I don't know what I have open here. I just need a little lower music. There we go. Alright, I just need to get to the start to show you guys. Nothing's happening here. You definitely didn't see any mob standing there. <laughs> Ow. Okay. Remember do you guys remember the map? The map of the entire area we, we put up in Discord a long time ago? Right. So a few things changed. This area so the story of the game is that the animals itself is actually more like Zootopia. They're a bit, they're a bit like humanoids in that way as in the Zootopia movies. Um, and this entire area here used to be this great rescue city area. But it was taken over by the evil cough machine. And in the end... I've forgotten. <laughs> There's a big map of this area. In the end, uh, everything was taken over by the evil coffee machine, but Anton, in the last second, managed to save the most sacred thing that they have, which were the Tree of Life, um, and took it up into the space station, and he created the rescue team out of the teddies that came to life. Um, <laughs> evil coffee machine. Mm. Um, let me just show you guys the space station one second. Uno momento. John is here somewhere. Da -da -da -da. Uh, so again, this is quite early, but John is supposed to have this finished by the end of the month. So looking forward to that, John. So this... The tree, the tree of life, which is the most sacred thing in Teddy's world, was rescued up into the space station. This is the top dome of the rescue uh, of the space station. Um, so, as I was saying, ooh, that was the wrong one. As I was saying, the game's core loop is that you are part of the rescue team and you go out on rescue missions. Short. Dungeon slash instant based stuff all over the galaxy. It could be in the medieval time short one. It could be piratey. It could be spacey. It could be futuristic. And those are like small half 20 minutes to half an hour dungeons that you can do with your friends and go out and get a little bit of new gear. When you feel strong enough, every guild can then get their own piece of land. As you see here, this is the old area where the rescue city used to be that is now overtaken by the evil coffee machine. Guilds can then, they get one static one. So basically when you come here as your guild, you slowly kill the evil coffee machine's minions and when you kill them they don't respawn. And then your job is that you can slowly rebuild the rescue city together with your guild. But, if you're not into a hardcore way of doing this, you can just do rescue missions, stand the rescue, what it is, stand in the space ship, and kind of like do that loop, you could say. There's the social aspect, there's out getting new gear for your teddy and stuff. Um, but when you go out on these, you get blueprints and stuff for new buildings. So, the goal is basically, you take back the entire area here from the evil cough machine. Let me show you. So all of this area is going to be infested with evil cover machine minions and like old ruins from how it used to be in the rescue city. 
Um, and obviously this is a huge, huge area and it's going to take a lot of time. And again, this is unique to each guild. So nobody else can visit it on, unless you're inside of that guild. And uh, then you collectively together get new bl blueprints, harvest materials, kill off evil cough machine. But you might have to go out on a lot of uh, rescue missions before you're strong enough to actually start to defeat the evil cough machine and, and its minions and stuff. And it's more sort of related to some of the more hardcore players that really want to do something collectively together. What you can see here in the middle, the big crater here, is where the tree... Uh, this one? Where it used to be. And the main goal sort of is that obviously you need to rebuild the entire rescue city. Which is... Uh, there's, there's the ice area, there's the lava area, there's the green area, there's so many different areas here. In the end... You want to get the tree back. You want to rebuild the tree again. So rebuilding the entire thing. But this might take a year. It might take a really long time to do. Um, right now what we're working on is getting playable version where that top part here is completely done. Integrated into the game. Live on the servers. And then a few different rescue missions. So we can get the ball going basically. Um, and test out how is a dungeon, how long does it have to be, what is fun, what is not fun, how much do we need to balance the different characters and all that stuff. So basically everything is in quotes done, we're just integrating like crazy now all the stuff that has been built. And it's really exciting and we could do the normal releasing way and wait till everything is perfect or make this exclusive community version where only selective people get in and you kind of need to almost make an application to get into the game just like when you're trying to get into WoW guild or lineage guild or whatever it might be um, keeping it our world here Renat, I remember you asked that it might be hard to monetize the game but remember all the people that didn't I actually said that because you used to play that Remember, all the people that doesn't get into the game, they can still donate bits and different actions and events happen inside of the game. So remember, if you donated bits and then all of a sudden in front of us saw a huge boss spawn because somebody donated what is maybe, I don't know, 500 bucks or something like that. You could also tease other players. It could be... I don't know, make them weaker, stronger, spawn mana potions, spawn something in a city, whatever. So the incentive is that all the people that doesn't get into the game, they can still do something to the game. And that's where we can get a sort of an income for it, besides the people that just want to support it and pay a monthly thing to keep the servers up and stuff like that. Uh, and then, yeah, it's basically just a matter of... <laughs> harder, better, faster, stronger. It's a matter of how many people get to view the stream over time. And and I believe by having this game as a thing we do together, even on days where I have a hard time coming with new stuff happening in the rescue suit, we always have the game where new stuff can happen, you know? I believe I can fly. Because obviously all of this could be spent so much more work on but it's the functionality that is here now it's working we might as well take advantage and start testing it we are just forming basically the last bits and bobs uh, we need to be able to make everything work but yeah how do you guys like the idea of this entire area being where the old rescue city used to be and being the guild area that you then take back from the evil cough machine in your own tempo, basically. <laughs> I'm just afraid my PC won't be able to live out the game. <laughs> oh. I mean, you can take down a lot of... Uh, Yeah.
most of the <laughs> the graphics and and all this stuff can be taken down. You can see, uh, sorry, you can see you can. Well, yeah, you can you can take down from very low to ultra, where it's all that the heavy stuff. <laughs> Well, if this wasn't a PG channel, then what, Angie? <laughs> Will most of the processing be done in the server so normal climb machines are affected less? Uh, well, depend on you what you mean by processing because it doesn't really matter if the game cannot be processing people's graphical needs unless the entire program was run on the server. That's <laughs> that's not happening. The servers, they are running the, the navigation meshes and they are making sure that only the specific messages, you know, it's it's a server authority. So, so all it does is basically just making sure people are not cheating and the counts are running and, and all that stuff, you know. But yeah, there there's stuff like client side knows like it's not even gonna check it with the server if it's a legal move for instance then i can tell you what i truly think oh so you're excited we need to animate his eyes though people have been saying all the freaking time how creepy he is <laughs> i think he looks awesome i also think he needs a new idol animation because look at his arms they goes into him Islands would be nice. I actually think they are there. They're just not animated. You can see even the teeth. I don't know if you guys can tell, but you can see like white in the corner. He's quite scary. I just don't see him that way. It's my kid. It's my teddy kid. I think he's so cute. He's so cute. Also, another thing I can share with you guys is there is no classes. There's only one, which is Rescue Soldier. And abilities, since you guys will be fighting all over the galaxy in different sort of circumstances, you are going to be able to find and learn from different people around the galaxy different abilities. And it's up to you guys what you want to learn. If you want to be, you know, a laser space gun range it kind of fella, or you want to go up in more healing kind of stuff, um, we just want to make it simple so people can go out and actually farm for finding people that can learn them abilities and stuff. Break out the wallet. <laughs> um, so we thought that was a cool idea instead of just having, we want to basically distance ourselves as much as we possibly can from old time MMO by still keeping some of the awesome and cool stuff that it did have. Um, because obviously, if we if we want a lot of people to be playing the game, you need to go down on different performance sakes. Like for instance, if you wanted it to be a very hardcore hack and slash action based game, there's two things in it. First of all, if it's physics based and stuff, it's a lot harder for the server, and you can't really have these thousands of thousands of players that easy be playing together. Yes, exactly, Renard. It's up to you in your group to be like, do I want to farm to be able to heal better or do I want to farm to be able to be arranged better? We all start with some basic ones and then, uh, you know, you go out and you can basically collect better and, and worse for whatever type of better worse. That's not what I wanted to say. You are in charge of how you want to basically build your character. So we are making a set of abilities and everybody can learn them. I don't know. You know, this is this is something to do with balancing. We might be putting some restrictions. You know, we need to see what players is doing. If it's completely Ragnarok and 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 we 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 cannot control it, we need to put some limitations and stuff. But the the, the main idea and what we've been working on is we make all these abilities and we make it so you have a few when you start and rest. You need to go out and venture and find and learn basically. 
It could be from something that drops, that learns you the ability, or it could be an old man by the end of an instance that learns you this thing, you know? Also, all of... Ah! I forgot to put fly on. Ah! <laughs> Da da da! <laughs> Don't die in the level. No. Um, the reason also for building the rescue city is because each building you guys build has a function. One build could be a bank, another one could be, you know, like a farm thing where you need to harvest stuff from it so you get a certain material or a certain food or whatever. So. Just saying that it's not just the the building of the rescue zoo and city and stuff is not just cosmetic. There is an incentive behind it, and that is that every single thing there might be some cosmetic stuff, just like a fence, a piece of fence might not do anything. But if you're building the farm, you can you know grow crops or whatever. Uh, if you build a certain building, it might be as said before, it might be storage. It might be learning your new skill, it might be giving you a buff, it might be selling you an item, it might be spawning an NPC that spawns a portal that gives you this rare instance, or whatever it might be. There is a reason for building it besides that it's just fun. So, taking back the rescue, old rescue city, there's also a lot of ruins that you need to... Um, if there's no building, you can right click on it and you need to remove it before you can build on it. And stuff like that. Building is gonna be working so you claim a piece of land. Let's see. This is Nico's area. And uh, you can see here, then inside of here, I'm gonna be able to place down, for instance, a trade house or a house foundation or what it might be. You're also able to sell actually to other players, but this is close to be only people's guilds that can get in here, but you're able to sell it to other players. Basically it can be guild members. Let's say that you on your land, uh, you got a specific storage unit that then you only you can use and you don't need it anymore but Renard really want to buy it for 5,000 rescue coins then you guys are able to trade we also have integrated um, uh, let me see uh, an auction house but we're not sure if we're actually gonna put it inside the live version because times and research I've said that auction houses can break economy inside of especially MMOs. So we're not sure how this is going to be done. And also who is really in need of the auction house when it's only the guild in the start that is playing on the server. You know? But uh, yeah. I think it might be a feature for later. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of, you know, core features that, you know, you just think about when you start developing and stuff that you want because you think you need it. <laughs> I actually think... <gasps> there's an evil minion! Ah! <laughs> Well, robot. And I know, I know, there's a spelling mistake. Ah! He's too strong! <laughs> ah! Help! Bye bye. Whee! <laughs> Alright. And this is why we will not be seeing more gameplay today because Angia is a little trickster. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah.
yeah, I hope you guys like getting a little bit of a sneak peek here. Um, and I hope you liked the new way of doing it, which is not as new, but um, I think it could be awesome having it as our very own community secret game. Also, because, you know, if you open up, let's say, a Minecraft private server, when you then go onto Twitch and play it, thousands of other people can have one but we can we we can literally remember the good days when we have sometimes we have had 5k people watching in here imagine that and we are the only one in the category having the game how much hype that's going to give us i think it will help it separate itself from the other mmos and survival games uh you mean the fact that it's more like this it's basically a guilds own game 